On this episode of The Sequence, I will show you how to steal sounds from your favorite VST plugin using the auto sampler. <laughs> <laughs> The sequence. What is going on, guys? <laughs> so, the honest truth here is that I want to show you guys how to use like your VST plugins that are on your desktop and standalone, no matter where you go. And you know that's one of the coolest things using the auto sampler. So basically, this is what this tutorial is about. So, fair warning: if you are going to take sounds from a VST plugin or from hardware, like I'm going to show you in this video you don't have the right to resell them as they are inside of the hardware or the VST plugin. Make sure that you make your own unique sounds using these tools. And that's the only thing that I want to preach about in this video. So let's go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna show you in the MPCB software, which is free by the way, the link will be in the description box, but it does translate if you do have an MPC one or a live or an X, you could do it in controller mode as well because we're grabbing VST plugins. So Let's go to the top left side of the screen over here and make sure that you are selected the plugin. And then we're gonna go and grab a third party plugin of some sort. So I'm gonna go down here to VSTs. And the next thing I'm gonna do is grab a plugin that I really like, which by the way, this is a really good idea for if you don't have a computer with max settings or max uh, specs, it can help you with CPU load. So we have ChipSynth. SFC here, which is a new plugin that I did a review on, and let's hear it. All right, so we hear it, and now what we want to do is steal sounds from it. So I like those strings here, and what I'm going to do is go to the top left part of the screen, and I'm going to go to a feature called Auto Sampler. Boom. So now that we have Auto Sampler, I'm going to go and close this plugin real quick, and we're good to go. And I'm gonna explain a couple of things here. So with the auto sampler, there are a couple of things that you have to set up so that you understand. And I wanna give you some explanation here. So it says record from, uh, I use input one and two. You can use resample uh, just in case you wanna use any other sounds or something like that from there. And that is also something that I want to remind you that you might wanna turn off any effects on that particular patch that you're ripping. And with that, you can do a couple of other things too as well. So we have things like minimal notes, which would be C2. So if I press on the keys right here, you see C2. So that's the range. And if I press the highest C, my highest range is that. So make sure that you're, you're gonna make sense of that because if you don't make sense of what you're sampling, then you're gonna have a pretty bad sound and the file might be too big, which brings me to Note Stride. Note Stride is at six right now, but if you wanna sample each and every individual note, I, I highly recommend that setting if you are using something that is very high quality sound, like a piano or something like that from a content bank or, or any other high quality sound that you're ripping so you can use it. Uh, but I wanna go ahead and use six and what this means right here for note stride is that it will sample every one note. Uh, and if I was at three, it'd be every third note. And in six, it'd be every sixth note. So since I'm using that sound, I'm just gonna go ahead and use every sixth note. And I, I'll just go as high as, I don't know, maybe about C5. Here we go. So I'll set that to C5. This next one is layer one and layer two, layer three, layer four. So if, it has a, if you have multiple layers, uh, you can pr uh, predict how the sound will be like. Uh, I usually just keep the value at 127 and allow it to be flexible. The next thing is note length. Now note length matters because you might wanna have the note length at four seconds, which is represented right here. Uh, 3000 milliseconds right over here is three seconds. So. I'm gonna go ahead and put four seconds in. So I'm gonna, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just type it in manually. So four, hundred, maybe not that. I'll do, uh, I'll just type in four, four. There we go, four seconds will be 400 milliseconds there. And I'll keep the tail the same. Uh, then you have base name, 
because you can name it uh, what you what you need it to be and it will take the name of whatever the program it is so the next thing you want to do here is just type in something that you can remind yourself what it is so I like chip synth I just use temp chip synth SFC and then I put in like Zelda strings or something like that because those are the strings from Zelda and now we have enabled looping. It says forge. You have forge, alternative, or alternating, my bad, and reverse. So I'll just keep it at forge. And it says loop start loop in here. Uh, then you have crossfade. Most people say X fade, but I'm going to say crossfade. And you can adjust that. So what that means is that uh, when it, when after the four seconds goes away, and it will create a fade inside of there so that it will not have a, a large popping sound, which I could demonstrate, but I'm not going to demonstrate. I'm just going to set it at X fade sample one so that it, that it will cross over instead of it uh, popping and uh, so forth because it's not correctly at the zero point. In the next category, it says on completion, it says make current program. I will do that. And then it says the session duration, 30 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and hit do it and it's going to sample everything. So now I'm going to turn the volume down just a little bit because it is a little loud. I just realized that. And now it has selected the key group automatically once it created that program. And now play that different velocities here. Let's see if you get over here so you can see that. So now that you can see that everything is there and I'm going to play it a little longer. I'm going to play the note at a high. No, I'm going to play it at C over here. And you can hear it popping a little bit and that is where the crossfade was made at. So it, it kind of minimalized the pop, but just make sure that when you do some sampling and stuff like that, and that particular plugin itself is basically a sampler. The next thing I want to show you how to do is to save it. How do you save these programs once you create them? So all you have to do to save it is go right here and click on that particular key group that was created, that particular program that is. Right click on that and then click save. And now you're met with a whole bunch of options of where you want to save your XPM file so you can pull it up for a little later and they will put all the files organized into a folder for you so it doesn't really matter. And now I can save it anywhere that I want so make sure that you save it in the, the place that you want it to be. If you have an extra folder, you can create a new folder of course. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save and now I have access to that program again. Just make sure that you know that it's in your documents or whatever folder that you're in so you can pull it up for a little later. Okay, for this next part, I'm gonna show you how to do that exact same process, but with hardware, okay? So with hardware, I have the MicroFreak, which is the hardware unit that I'm going to sample from. However, I'm going to use my MPC Live 2 as the unit where I'm going to do the auto sampling from. So the one thing that you need is a pair of these right here, which is five pin MIDI DINs. Now I have this little adapter on there because this doesn't have full five pin MIDI DINs on it. So, you know, other units or whatever might have these right here. It just depends on what you got. So the golden rule that I want to teach you guys is MIDI out to MIDI in. Okay. Or MIDI in to MIDI out. So what I want to do is send MIDI from the MPC inside of the synthesizer. So what I'm going to do is go from MIDI out and this does work on the one, two as well. So don't worry about, you know, if you have the MPC one or live or X, this is universal. So I got to figure out a way to plug this in. <laughs> I'm doing this with one hand. Uh, so I'm plugging it MIDI out right here. We're just going to pretend this all the way in. And then we're going to plug this into the MIDI in. And now that we have made that connection, 
uh, what it's going to do is whatever I have in the MIDI, I'm going to send MIDI to this right here and it's going to receive it. So that is all I need. And now you need to plug up the synthesizer itself to the MPC. So let's go ahead and make that connection too as well. Now I have a wire. I need, of course, a quarter inch jack wire here. <laughs> this is more difficult. <laughs> it's mad difficult. My bad. I don't go right into this output because it needs to hear the synthesizer inside the MPC to sample it, right? So I'm plugging it up into the output here. Make sure that you do that. And we're going to plug these two into the input. So the red will go into the right, the left here. You can also use a different type of plug too as well and just record just the left or the right signal here. So I could just go ahead and show you that just in case you don't have this right here, a Y cable, a quarter inch Y cables, or what they call uh, insert cables. All right, so now that we have that, well, let's go ahead and I'm gonna unplug it just to show you. Here, this is so fun. <laughs> let's do that, boom. And now let's do that. We're gonna plug it into the right because it doesn't matter which side you plug it up on, uh, you can choose whatever input that you want here. <laughs> this thing is going crazy. But yeah, hopefully you got the big picture. Let's go ahead and sample the Micro Freak now into the MPC-1 using the same process. All right, so here's the MPC-1. Of course, I did everything. Like I have the MIDI out going into the MIDI end of the synth right here, which is the Micro Freak I'm using. I just wanted to use that. I love this baby. Uh, let's hear it. So we can hear it and, and it works. So what I want to do first is go into MIDI mode and make sure that it's sending something to the Micro Freak. So it's not sending anything to it because I need to select that MIDI port. And now I can hear the sound. And that's important, okay? Okay, so now let's go into the sampler. Let's play it. hear it so you can see my voice too make sure that the input is correctly if you don't see any input uh, you go into the input here I'm using input one because that's fine remember I said you can sample uh, whatever input that you want so make sure that you utilize that correctly now go to auto sampler which is this keyboard sign right here let's go back in the sampler here hit that and now we can go ahead and sample this thing let's sample this baby so that's why I did it on the desktop first. So you can get a, get used to it on the actual standalone unit. So I'm typing in micro freak. I'm going to type in key because I'm naming it. Make sure that you name your sound so you can look it up for later. Change any of the options that you want. Of course, we already went through that and I'm good with everything. So let's go ahead and sample this baby. Here we go. Now I just already sampled in there. What I want to do here is go into my key group. And now I see that I have Micro Freak key in there. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And we're good to go. So the next thing I want to do here, let's say I want to save it. Of course, in standalone is a little different. So you would hit this pencil sign, go into here, says save current program, save current program, choose where you want to save it, of course. And I would save it in to wherever program I want. I got the name. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. I just save it in the folder I like. And you're good to go. Now you can recall that for any time that you want to create anything. Okay. Dope, right? So tell me how you feel about this video. I definitely want to hear from you. <laughs> I want to hear from you guys in the comment section. I'm pretty sure that y'all have some interesting things to say. I know a few people might say, oh, this video was clickbait, but was it though? I mean, I did show you how to steal sounds from a VST plugin, right? And from hardware, right? Uh, but Nonetheless, though, I'm not encouraging any type of behavior, even though I put the word still in there is how to take interesting. You, you get how this YouTube stuff works. 
Just let me know how you feel. Leave a comment below if you have anything interesting for another video.